I'm just glad that is over. Like, oh my days, we were so complacent there. We literally treated that like a training ground game that we'd already knew we were going to win, uh, which is a little bit frustrating. There was a little bit of like a lack of respect, kind of like, and yeah, a, a big sense of complacency, really. Uh, Norwich played really, really well. They defended like a solid uh, team. And if they'd played like that a little bit more, perhaps they wouldn't be at the bottom of the table. But yeah, they defended absolutely stoutly all the way through and they caused us uh, some problems as well. But thankfully, we got the job done. But it, it took pretty much all our firepower. But the problem was, not not the players on the pitch. It was the performance levels of the players on the pitch. We gave it about 20%. Like, yeah. Uh, just everything was off. Like, you know, passes were going two, two yards off where they normally would. Um, you know, players were taking a little bit too long on the ball. Or taking a, one too many touches. Or just, yeah, it was... It was so lethargic and we, we couldn't get any real chances, to be honest. Um, so yeah, it was a scrappy cup game uh, and I really hope we don't play like that against Brighton. I don't think we will because, again, I thought we literally thought, oh, it's Norwich, they've been poor since lockdown. You know, it's an FA Cup game, we can make eight changes and we can just uh, blow them away. Which ultimately, I thought we probably could, especially if we... Uh, Performed to the levels we could, but regardless, yeah, it was a, it was, it was a, it was a frustrating game. But we've came through it, and we are in the semi-finals. So yeah, we just move on and just make sure we show heart in the next games because yeah, we're much better than this display. We really are. Um, but anyhow, uh, chances, notable ones. Obviously, the goal from Agallo, really, really good. Like striker's instinct. Uh, that's exactly what he was bought for, and it means he's now scored in every single game that he started for Manchester United to date. Um, it was a bit scrappy how it fell to him, but yeah, like a really deft, clever finish, to be honest. Uh, and then early into the second half, Fred with a lovely uh, lofted through ball. The kind of pass that you would expect Pogba to make. Um, and yeah, uh, unfortunately, Bruno couldn't get his uh, footing sorted. I, I thought particularly in the first half, Bruno looked like a, a, a player that was playing in a championship side. Like, other than Maguire, I think he was the only one that came out with any credibility that started the game anyhow. Um, the, the rest of them didn't really put a, a big shift in. Um, but yeah, Bruno again just looked levels apart of anyone really. He, he kind of simmered down towards the end. But one thing that I find incredible about him, not just you know his, his talent, it was in the ooh, was it the second half of extra time. You know he'd been on since you know the first minute, of course. Uh, well, zero minutes, but anyhow. Uh, and it was like 115th minute and uh, a pass that he made got intercepted and he literally ran all the way to, well, our goal line pretty much and uh, made a tackle and then bombed up the field again. So he's got unbelievable levels of stamina. Um, but yeah, obviously Oli will be a bit gutted that everything went to extra time and yeah, we've had to play players longer than we would have liked. We've had to bring on our strongest XI pretty much for the end of it. Um, I, I kind of thought in, in extra time that kind of hindered us a little bit because we had like Martial, Rashford and Agarlo within the space of like 10 yards of each other. Um, and I, I felt like we weren't using the width. It was really frustrating. We were trying to make these intricate one-twos, but you had Greenwood in acres of space down the right. Rashford got a lot of space sometimes. I know I've just said he was central, but if it wasn't him, it would be Shaw who had a lot of space on the uh, left. But we weren't really using the channels. We weren't trying to cross the ball in, which I thought considering we had Martial, Rashford and Agallo all running into the box with potentially Fernandes as well. You know, it, it might have been a better tactic, but nevertheless, we got the win. Uh, a fantastic goal, though, from Todd Cantwell. I think that's his first name. Uh, outside the box, brilliant. Uh, Romero probably could have done a bit better. Uh, sunlight did look as though it might have been an issue, but it's no real excuse for a, for a goalkeeper. Uh, De Gea's made some errors recently, so yeah, I think I think that one goes down to a Romero uh, error. Um, but in the first half, Maguire made a fantastic block uh, to stop. Oh, I can't even think now. One of the Norwich players um, scoring a, a brilliant, uh, proper like captain's block, really. He put his uh, body on the line and stopped us from conceding, to be honest. And at that point, uh, Norwich were the better team. Uh, so if they'd have scored that, uh, I think it was at nil-nil still. That was before Agarlo scored, so things might have changed. But yeah, um, late into the second half, of course, Bruno with a lovely flick through to Agarlo and a rugby tackle from... Um, closer 
a blatant red card. Like it's a goal scoring opportunity. Agallo's probably he's going to at least have a shot if not score. Uh, so yeah, like a, a no complaints there. Uh, I don't think uh, clear red. Uh, so he was sent off, and that meant Norwich played with ten men for the next five minutes of regular time, and then thirty minutes of extra time. But yeah. It, it just felt like a, a training game and a complacent cup game, pretty much. Like there wasn't, there wasn't too much passion, too much desire, really. It, it was just like, yeah, we're gonna win this, so we'll, we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll just play to the very basic level. Um, I thought in the first half Lingard had a few nice dribbles, but the one irritating thing was you could quite clearly tell he's been told by Ollie he, he's no longer at the club, so he wants to make a statement. And instead of a couple of little chances where he could have passed it off after a great dribble, he tried to shoot just to try and, you know, get in all these good books or just get a bit of confidence. I understand it. It's just a bit frustrating, um, especially when it's nil-nil. I'm not blaming Lingard at all. Like, as I say, other than Maguire and Bruno, for the players that started, no one really played that well, uh, in fairness. I know Igalo scored, but other than that, he, he was, well, he could have had another one, actually, to be fair to him, uh, if it wasn't for the the red card but yeah um everyone else was just lackluster and again treated it like a training game really um i thought uh, someone who did play really well when he came on though was brandon williams uh, a lot of urgency a lot of pace uh, he made a fantastic block and uh, norwich again it was 1-1 at the time i think uh, or it might have been 1-0 but yeah no, it was 1-1 because it was extra time. Or was it not? Regardless, I can't remember. Was it late in the second half? I think so. But it was 1-1 and a ball's played through and if Williams doesn't get the tackle on, it's pretty much a guaranteed goal. But yeah, he literally slid in. Perfectly timed challenge. Got the ball, prevented the goal. And yeah, he, he looked really, really energetic when he came on. So I think he'll start against Brighton. Uh, Shaw's now played every single minute, uh, I think. Unless he got subbed off in the last game. But he started all three games so far, so I reckon Williams might be used, and that's why Dalo was subbed um, instead of Shaw, because I, I think Dalo will be the sub for next game, and Shaw will, will get a rest. So I think it'll be Williams and Juan Bissaka on the wing, on the uh, the fullback position for the Brighton game. But yeah, uh, there's not a lot to say really. We're into the semis. I know it's kind of like a, a dampener. Um, I was going to say post-match interview. I'm not a player. <laughs> Review. Uh, but yeah, there wasn't too much to talk about really. Uh, but I'm just glad we are through. We're into the semi-finals, two games, and we potentially have another trophy. So that's something to look forward to. And because of the teams left in the competition, uh, you've got Sheffield United and Arsenal. Difficult to call that one because Sheffield United are on poor form. Arsenal, I know they won against Southampton, but still ravaged with injuries, not playing well. So that one's a tough one to call. You got Leicester, Chelsea. Chelsea obviously on really high. Uh, at the minute but Leicester on poor form but again in the cup you never know Chelsea could do what we did and barely turn up so Leicester might get through and then City Newcastle again Newcastle on good form uh, City probably quite dampened at the minute because of the the, the Premier League champions but yeah um, I don't know it's actually quite hard to call like if, if you pick and favourite from each team obviously you'd say Arsenal you'd say Man City and you would say uh, Chelsea. So they would be the expected semi-finalists. But I, I, th I think there's a case for any of them. So, yeah, because it's a semi-final, uh, when we play that, we will actually give it a go. We won't be complacent. At least that's what I'm hoping. But anyhow, I've rambled on too much for a, a game that doesn't really warrant it, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the Brighton game. We'll be back to our usual selves uh, post Bruno Fernandes, anyhow. Uh, so, yeah. <sighs> Hopefully we can get a solid win in that and continue the push for top four.